tale of immortality, Methuselah's children. But first, it looked like it was all over at the end of Before the Screaming Begins, but writer Wally K. Daly and his aliens were merely planning the next phase of the attack. Control 1 to all units. General report at week 17 of 20-week program for Earth takeover. Pre-commencement of phase 6. Blue light subjects worldwide performed as projected and are training others to use their sixth sense. Now have powers of total mind reading and thought transference. As anticipated, a World Council opposed to our plan now established. End of general report. Phase 6. Commence immediately. All units to continue oversee of defined areas from non-site zones until Earth takeover. Blanking procedure to be observed. Repeat. Phase 6. Comments now. About a minute and a half, Captain. Okay, Pete, hold a steady at two. Sir. 325, calling base. 325, calling base. Go ahead, 325. Holding steady at Mach 2, altitude 22,000. Any sightings? Negative re sightings. Calm, clear, beautiful blue, not a saucer in sight. Same as every other week for the last 17. This could get boring. Received your negative. Continue return sweep along down lake to base. With luck, you'll find saucers with cups on them. <laughs> Captain! What is it? God. God, I don't believe it. Base, are you still with me, Base? Go ahead, 325. Look, you're going to think I'm crazy, and I must admit I'd agree with you. Dropping back, Captain. My number two will confirm what I'm about to say. What's going on, 325? Base, I don't know how to tell you this. There's a young kid about 15 years old. He's flying alongside us, waving through the cockpit window. We're going to get the aliens. 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 The Silent Scream by Wally K. Daly with James Lawrenson as Tom Harris and Hannah Gordon as his wife Sally. Colin Douglas as the Prime Minister, Peter Wickham as Silkin, and Donald Hewlett as A.P. Smith. Three weeks to Armageddon, and the typists type away. Music sweet to ears of one such as me, who lives for the eternal tinkle of tea and the tinnicky ting of typewriters. Come in. Oh. The day. Can I help you? Yes, of course you can. How sweet of you to offer. My card, a Smith, AP. An innocuous little name, but enough to mark me out. My card. Rather good photograph, don't you think? Oh, yes. Mr. Smith. Oh, Mr. Silkin told me to expect you. He's in with the PM and Cabinet at the moment. I wonder if you'd... Uh, take uh... a seat. Love to. Exactly what I need at this moment in time. Huh. Right there. It's better. Strolled across St. James's to get here. Check the quality of this year's ducklings. A heart still youthful and feet grown old. A poetical tragedy. As I look back over a long, full and happy life, Miss... Uh, oh, so sorry. I'm surely I didn't catch your name. Miss... Um, uh, Miss Divine. Gloria Divine. A song in itself. As I look back over a long, full and happy life, Miss Divine, I regret nothing but the passing of my youthful feet. Her pimples and puberty hold no allure, but feet irreplaceable. You're about to ask me if I'd like a cup of tea, how kind of you? Well, yes, I was, but how did you know? You're not... And now you're wondering, is he one of those dreadful sixth sensor people? Oh, oh no, I... Yes, I... written all over your face. But rest easy, my dear. I am no walking miracle man, far from it. But I do know all about the sixth sensors. All about them. From personal experience. Miss Divine. Really? You're quite 
positive you're not... Uh, Gloria, oh. has Mr. Smith arrived? Oh. There you are, A.P. Uh, come straight through. Oh, please go in, oh. Mr. Smith. Thank you. Gloria, saved by the bell, eh, my dear? Or the timely intervention of Mr. Silkin? In I go and minus a cup of tea. Well, such is the state of the crisis. Good day, sir. Uh, welcome back, A.P. How was your trip? A fine, sir. Good. Uh, take a seat. Ah. Oh, Prime Minister breathing down my neck. Wants the RM data regarding spread of the sixth sense power is worldwide now as well as local. Been correlated yet? Uh, just waiting your report. Ah. Communications doing the rest of the world now. Should be up any time. This new maintenance among countries has taken all pleasure of discovery out of the job. My little bit of information gathering is bound to be echoed in every corner of the world. True. But if you think RM section's got problems, think of the Secret Service Boys AP. Job centres of the world full of redundant spies. Countries falling over themselves to give up their greatest secrets for the common good. Hopeful of finding an answer to the unanswerable. If this alien threat's real, how can we stop it? Aren't we a lucky world to find a common enemy after all these thousands of years? Suddenly we're all friends and all arms and armories point to the sky. Eyes ache with constant sky searching as we tick remorselessly to our deadline, finding no comfort in the stars. And... You want to report on your trip? Yes, fine. Not an awful lot to say, really. People don't know what to believe. But are being fairly phlegmatic about it generally. If in doubt, do not. <laughs> Seems to be the order of the day now. The panic's died down. The earlier riots when the news first broke won't be repeated, I don't think. But the people are uneasy. Funny things are happening in the world. Mr. Harris and his fellow blue light men. Mm. They're still trying to train their Sixth Sense followers to coordinate their powers worldwide and stand up to the aliens. Yes, and their powers can be pretty devastating, as we both yeah. know. Yes, extrasensory perception, telekinesis, telepathy, PSI, the whole shooting match ramp. Is Harris having much success? Not a great deal. I think the Central Office of Information film campaign is paying off handsomely. People are being frightened off from joining them, but the churches are packed every Sunday. I only hope you're right about them being frightened off. Oh, I am. The movement's a bit too ant-like for the common mind to accept easily, and mind-reading's creepy. True. Uh, cigarette? No, thanks. Yeah. We all like to hang on to our privacy, and I think that's why there's not many takers. Myself, for one. But there are the children. Children? Teens and upwards. They're flocking to it, lemming-like. Hmm? The road to Tom Harris's Midlands base is awash with unwashed youth heading towards tomorrow's Nirvana. And if the power is real, that could present problems for Tom Harris as well as us. I think they should easily get out of hand. Oi! Me? Yes, you. Where are you off to? I'm going to Allingbury. For what? I'm going to join the Sixth Senses lot. Why? Why what? Why are you going to join them? Just fancy it, that's all. Oh, should have more sense, bright looking kid like you. You know it's going to be banned any day now, don't you? It's not banned yet, is it? Still a free country, isn't it? Watch your lips, Sonny. Right, uh, I think you'd better come in with us for questioning. Back to the station house. Why? What charge? No charge. But if deal be, we'll think of something. Vagrancy, abroad without parental consent, that sort of thing. How old are you? Fourteen. I can go where I like, as I said, it's still a free country, isn't it? What's your name? Andy. Right, Andy. I'm going to check you out, just in case. Name, address, date of... What the...? Leave him be. Those days are over. Where the hell did you come from? Charlie! OK, I saw it all. Right, wonder boy, push off. We're not impressed with your six senses and your party tricks. We've been long enough around these borderlands of Tom Harris's place not to be overly awed by people arriving unexpectedly. So push off. Let's take him in peace. Otherwise, Don't you'll be... be impertinent, little policeman. <sighs> what are you doing? Oh, we young ones no longer have patience with such mindlessness. Crawl back to your car and drive off to continue your futile lives. Stop playing your childish games so near to our territory. The aliens are coming. 
We have no time for your foolishness. We must prepare. Enjoy your last three weeks of sanity somewhere else. What's happening to them? What are you doing to them? Stop it! Stop it! You'll kill them! They deserve to die. Look! Everybody who doesn't see the need to join we six senses deserves to die, and the police seem to be stupider than most. Go away, policeman. Warn your friends to stop interfering. <laughs> Look at them, scuttle away. Too blind to see the need to take the power on offer. Fodder for the aliens, tomorrow's madman. Now, you can go to our headquarters. It's just beyond that hill. You've changed your mind. Well, don't be frightened. It's the authorities that make us young ones irritable. You'll be safe. You'll learn control. It's fun, Andy. We can do anything. We're like gods. You can be one of us. No. No, I, I, I have changed my mind. I, I want to go now. I, I want to go home. Another one of tomorrow's madmen. In three weeks' time, when the aliens return, you'll be screaming with the rest and I won't even sympathise. Goodbye, stupid. Oh, I must go, sir. At least finish your tea. It's all right. I'm okay. I can hear a mind up at the crossroads. Young, 14 or so. Kid called Andy. Can you hear him? He wants to join us. He's been badly scared by something. Plucking up the courage to walk the last mile. I'd better... Look, relax, Tom. Please. I can hear him. Seems nice. I'm sure he'll wait. Oh, you look so tired. You need to rest as well as work. There's so little time, Sal. There is so little time. There's only three more weeks before the aliens come back. I'll be glad when that 20 weeks deadline is up so everyone can learn how stupid they were not to believe you and all the other blue light people. No, don't say that, well, They're Sal. stupid, Tom. Blind and stupid. No, they're human. And us? Oh, I don't know what to believe anymore, Sal. Perhaps the press is right. Where's Brian? Oh, he's up north somewhere, trying to get people to join us. Has he had any success? Very little. This morning I opened my mind to him and it's the same reaction wherever he's been. First disbelief, then he performs a couple of tricks like a circus entertainer trying to please the crowd, knocks a tree down by thinking about it, or floats six foot off the ground, anything stupid or childish like that to impress them. And each time he felt a wave of fear wash over him. He let me share the memory. It was frightening, Sal, it was frightening. And then most of them turned down the offer of being trained. What's happening in other countries? Exactly the same. I linked into the Blue Light Network last night and I spoke to everyone like me, worldwide. The same despondency. We failed, Sal. Oh, we God. all know we failed and it's hard to live with. Only kids come to us. Right around the globe, it's only kids. The adults mostly don't want to know. And the kids don't help what you're trying to do and not with the tricks they've been getting up to frightening people. Well, I know, but what can you do? They're all we've got, Sal. Just kids. You? Brian and a few local villagers here. That's all we've got in England to fight off an alien threat. What can we do, sir? Well, I just hope that they mature very quickly. They're deliberately abusing their powers, behaving like little Hitlers. Yeah. I'll go and collect Andy. Try to persuade him how serious it all is. Perhaps he'll listen to me and not to the other youngsters. Perhaps. Well, Circuit Report makes it quite clear. These six sensors will have to be banned. Yeah. All right, yeah. clever clogs. <laughs> so we ban them. How do you propose to enforce the ban? Yes. Prime yes. Minister, you have no right to talk to me in that fashion. I would remind you that we are now a coalition, and I demand to be treated with all due respect. Yes. Yes. The Prime Minister is right. Unenforceable legislation is worthless. We'll make it enforceable. How? If we were in control of the situation, oh, you would see by now that he <laughs> Hang on, hang on, hang on. Right. Let's yet again quietly state the case. We've got to go on believing that the alien message delivered to us 17 weeks ago that they intended to take us over is true. While convincing the public, it's not. Oh, why not let the public make up their own minds what to believe? Because it's World Council policy, Freddy, that's why. We can't afford to have riots like the first week after the sources appeared. We got off light in this country. America was awash with blood, 
And China just as bad. Mass hallucinations. Oh, don't oh, it Whether the flying saucers were hallucinations or not, it happened. All over the world, every capital city saw one appear. Yeah, <laughs> we saw ours ourselves outside that very window. And each country had its own blue light blokes. Normal blokes like Tom Harris, whipped off for a ten-day trip and then delivered back with their sixth sense revealed, capable of reading other people's minds, thoughts, secrets, nightmares, acting like bleeding supermen, and delivering their alien messages direct to heads of government. Accept the training by Tom Harris, or go mad? Aye, uh, and 20 weeks to make our minds up. Give in to their terms, accept the training, or have a world madness. There was enough madness in the first week. Never mind 20. Uh, yeah. That was now to do with the aliens, Marty. Just general panic reaction. The World Council thing soon stopped that. Once you've got a policy for the whole world and agreement there'll be no more hostilities till we've sorted these aliens out, you can soon get the press calming the people down and convincing them it's all baloney. Yes, but we happen to know that it's not baloney. But what happens in three weeks' time when the aliens whip off this protective cover thing and we all receive this sick sensibility when it pours into every mind in the world? We'll all be screaming wrecks within days! Exactly. <laughs> That's where Umbrella comes in. Hmm? Umbrella? Aye, Umbrella. umbrella. <laughs> Now we come to the good news. <laughs> Remember when the Americans tried to quarantine their blue light bloke in the early days? You mean when a whole town was wiped out? 50,000 people dead, including troops. Everyone except their blue light man, in fact. Well, they switched on a machine. Silkin. Sir. Get it on the desk from underneath there. All right, sir. That's it's rather heavy, sir. Well, come on, come on. A piece yeah. of equipment. Yeah. 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 Right. As I was saying, they switched on a machine just like this, only bigger, and 50,000 people died. <laughs> Hopefully, our boffins have got the problems ironed out. Because I'm going to switch it on right now. No, Andy, don't open your eyes. That's it. Just a pinprick of light over to the left. You see it? Behind your mind. You've got it. That's the one. Fine. Now, think it out of the way. No, no you, you can't touch it. You've just got to think it. I can't. I can't move it, Mr. Oh, Harris. And Andy, your sixth sense has always been there. It's just a point of finding the door. Once you can hold it, you can open it. Once you can open it, you'll understand. I'm a bit frightened, Mr. Harris. Don't be. You're nearly there now. We're quite shielded down here. That's why we use this deep cave for training. There won't be many thoughts pouring in. I'll cut you off if it gets too loud, okay? That's it. Now, fine. Now, you're in control, Andy. You've got it. That's it. Lift the light out of the way. Oh! How can I? Imagine it's hinged. Flip it out of the way. I can't. Try. Flip it out of the way. It's the door to power. It must be open. I can't move it, Mr. Harris. Honest. You can. That's right. Now it's moving. Keep trying. You've got it opening. Mr. Harris. Uh, now. Mr. Harris. Uh, now. Now swing it open. Uh, uh, control the sound. Control all the minds. Control. Control. Uh, now, Andy. Now. Control the sound. You're okay now, Andy. Fantastic! Yes. It's quite something, isn't it? Bit of a shock at first when you hear people thinking for miles around. It's all right now. I can control it. Yes, I know. But it, it's more important to control yourself, Andy. Well, how do you mean, Mr. Harris? Uh, a lot of the young ones have been joyriding, giving people shocks by appearing unexpectedly, that sort of thing. And oh, I won't do that, Mr. Harris. I know you won't want to, but when you get to the others... Well... Look, Andy... I'm training people, all we blue light men all over the world, the first ones who were taken off in the flying saucers, we're all training as many people as possible for one purpose and one purpose only, to try to beat the aliens. Not because it's fun, not because it's fantastic having a sixth sense, being able to teleport, being invincible, that sort of thing, but to beat the aliens so that... Good morning, Mr. Mr. Harris. I was talking privately, you shouldn't intrude. We're very sorry, Mr. Harris. <laughs> Hello again, Andy. We all want to welcome you. Take you with us to the hall. The hall? Help you settle in. Would you like that, Andy? Look, kids, I think... Th Come on, Andy, hold hands. We'll help you. Teleportation's terrific. Well, Mr. Harris? I was in the middle of explaining He's to Andy. He's trained now. Your job's finished, Mr. Harris. We'll show him lots of other things. Helpful things. Won't we? Yes. You'll be all right with us, Mr. Harris. 
We're going to be good boys and girls from now on, aren't we? Of course, of course we, we are. are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, come back. Oh my God. Tom? Oh, I didn't hear you arrive. Are you all right? Yes. The kids have just been here. Took Andy back to the hall with them. Oh, no, I saw the vanishing trick. Tom, they're getting out of hand. You'll have to do something. No, they're just kids. They'll get over treating the power like a toy. We need them. No more adults have come in for training at all, in spite of Brian's efforts. So the press finally succeeded. <sighs> yes. Turned us into monsters. Tools of the aliens. That's so stupid and short-sighted. Oh, no, perhaps it wasn't the press at all. Hmm? Perhaps we really are monsters. That's it, sir. Now, full power. There you are. Didn't blow up after all. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. It's been well tested. I knew there was no danger. What's it supposed to do? It's doing it, Meg. Listen. What do you hear? A buzzing noise. Apart from that. Nothing. Exactly. No traffic. On the hour, exactly, and no Big Ben, thank God. Silence! But what's the point of it? Pick up the phone, Freddy. It's dead. Cut off. Silken, switch on the television, fire in. Very good, sir. Nothing, sir. Radio. Nothing, sir. And there, gentlemen, you have it. Umbrella. But what exactly is it doing? How does it work? I don't know how the hell it works. I've got no mind for that sort of thing. Something about a lattice work of lasers. But what it does, I don't know. For want of a better word, we're sitting inside an invisible bubble made by this little machine. We're cut off from every kind of communication right across the spectrum. <laughs> The brain boys reckon that the new power that the aliens have threatened to unleash on us will have to come as some sort of electronic wave, and that this machine should stop it. Well, this is how many of these umbrella things are there available? Well, it's about the first bit of cobbling together the world has ever seen. Thanks to the peace pact and panic, we've got enough machines, large versions of this, to sling round the world capitals and major cities before the 20 weeks is up. Enough to get quite a fair section of the population inside and safe. You say you've got these machines for the capitals and large cities. Well, what about the rest of the country? What about my constituents, the country towns and villages? Well, we're, we're getting them together as fast as we can, but... Yeah, but won't people panic when they know it's time? Funny things start happening and no protection available in their areas. But we're not going to tell them. Yeah. Oh, but you've got to tell them. Don't be daft. We can't tell them. There'd be another bloodbath. People fighting to get to the safety of the cities. We can't allow that. This is all absolutely top secret. Umbrella is not to be discussed with public or press. Got that? Each government shall keep it secret. This is World Council ruling. I agreed, and so must you. Yeah, Let me finish. If Umbrella works, as I say, large sections of the population will be safe. And we can get some sort of training program underway. Perhaps with the help of these six sensor people. If it doesn't work, we've had it anyway. So the first thing is, we've got to find out if it does work. How do you intend to go about that? We're going to ask our blue light bloke, Tom Harris, to help us test it. Just sit back and relax, Donald. It's not going to hurt at all. Well, all right, Mr. Harris. I feel a bit scary, but I'll have a go. Now, what do I have to do exactly? Well, I'm going to come into your mind, and together we'll find the light that opens Tom! Up the... Hang on a second. All, all right, sir. Will you come to the farm? Well, I was just going to start off a training session. Is it important? My mind's open. Have a look. No, since when? All morning, but it's been building up for the last few weeks. I, I, I didn't want to worry you. I'll come right over. Try to contact Brian. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, Donald. I, I, I'm going to have to leave you now. Oh, I was hoping you'd be able to get me done. Well, don't worry. You'll have the power by tonight, and it'll be like seeing for the first time. You'll find it very helpful. I must go now. My wife tells me a bit of a problem with the baby. Oh, I didn't see you. <laughs> Talking with our minds. Oh.
Sorry, I've got to go. Oh, well, I hope it's nothing serious. Oh, no. It'll be all right. Shut the door, Silken. Yes, sir. Oh, good to see the back of them all, bunch of old women. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down, Silken. Thank you, sir. Well, do you think we convinced them? It sounded very plausible, sir. Yeah, it did, didn't it? Where do we go and let them in on the truth? Yes, sir. It is. Right. Well, you better get it organised. For a start, all people heading for this place in the Midlands stopped and held. Kids as well, all right? Sir. At least until after the deadline is up. Very good, sir. And uh, Tom Harris himself? The plan still holds. Better send that RM man from the Ministry of Defence to deliver the message. What's his name? Uh, Smith, sir. A.P. Smith. Yeah, that's the one. Send him. But give him the same cock and bull story we gave the Cabinet. Meeting with me, testing him, Bella, that sort of thing. Wouldn't do if he got a whiff of what's really going on? Of course not, sir. As to the venue... Well, I thought one of the underground atom shelter places would be perfect. All right. Take your choice and have it adapted as necessary. Let Smith know which one. Very good, sir. Uh, anything else? No, that's enough skullduggery for one day. Right, I'll get moving on the necessary... Very good. ...arrangements. Children. Yes, sir? You think I'm doing the right thing? Well, it's a policy decision by the heads of the World Council, sir. That doesn't answer the question. You think I'm doing the right thing, lad? If, as you all seem to believe, the original blue light men and the people they've managed to train, the sixth senses, are the aliens' open sesame to this planet, as it were, well, then you're doing the only thing. The only thing that could possibly save the world, that is. Thank you, Silken. Oh, at last. Coming up the path now. Opening the door now. Oh, Tom. It's all right. Take it easy. I'm frightened. It'll be all right. Why didn't you tell me about it sooner? I thought it was just something that would pass. It was only a few moments at first, and then Sam would snap out of it. But it's been... It's been longer every day until this morning, and... Look, he just hasn't snapped out of it at all. Sam? Hey. Baby Sam? Nothing. When did it start? The day after you opened his mind to the power. Oh, God. Perhaps it was a mistake. I thought the earlier the better, more protected if he grew up with it. Have you been inside his mind to see where he is? No, I daren't. He seems happy enough. I thought I'd wait till you arrived. Okay. Did you manage to get Brian? Uh, yes. He's finishing off a meeting and then he'll teleport. He, he, won't, he won't be more than a few minutes. Well, I'd better go inside, see what baby Sam's up to. Is he reacting to any outside stimulus at all? No. No, I mean, what? Watch. Oh! Nothing. External senses completely blacked out. Eyes that don't see. Ears that don't hear. Pinch him. Oh, no, I'm... Pinch him! Nothing. No reaction. Oh, what have I done to him? Control 1 to base unit 12. Control 1 to base unit 12. Earth child approaching too close to mind barrier. Seek and redirect, but do not harm. Repeat, seek and redirect, but do not harm. Over. Part 2 of The Silent Scream is tomorrow. Coming up next Sunday in the Seventh Dimension at half six and half midnight, a short history of vampires, introduced by Natalie Haynes. And she is here, yes, in the Seventh Dimension now with me. Hello. Yeah, the Seventh Dimension looks more like the other dimensions than I was expecting. Oh, ah, yes, it's cleverly disguised. Yes, yes, very sneaky. I know if I put my hand through a wall or something, it'll all suddenly fall away, don't, Matrix style. Don't do that. No, I do understand. No, it'll all implode. Still. Yeah. <laughs> now, listen, this series, what's... Tell us what's brilliant about it. Uh, what's brilliant about it is that vampires are the monster of choice. They're always our monster of choice. They are our kind of um, sexy fantasy monster. And that just doesn't change at all. I think people had crushes on Dracula from the get-go. Yeah, he's based on Henry Irving, the... the theatre impresario, the cape was added on film. It isn't in the book. Interesting fact for you there.